When you're trying to bulk, the most important factor to consider is the digestibility of your food. Nothing will get in your way of a successful bulk, like feeling bloated and not being able to eat enough. So when you're considering the foods that you're trying to gain on, always pick foods that are really easy to digest. This is a this was a hard one to figure out. Do you do you have any studies that you would reference that help support this argument? I mean, I I know it to be true. I've experienced yeah. it myself. I don't think there's um, any studies on. There that. really isn't. No. That's why it's I think this is why it's a tough one because until you have tried to bulk for many years and gone through digestive issues and continue to push through that yep. for a long time and then finally submitted and said, "Oh, let me fix my gut first and then gone back." and seeing the difference, it's hard to explain this one to some. Uh, well, somebody. it's such an individualized experience. Like, you, In order to figure out which ones work best with you, you have to do the work of knowing which foods to kind of incorporate in that that do the best. And you can, you know, don't have any inflammatory response or anything that you might be potentially allergic to. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I'm going through this now. So I've been on this kind of, I've been on a bulk now for maybe about six weeks. And usually I have to stop because, you guys know, my gut issues are always, always play a role. And that, now for me, it's a, it's a very big difference because poor absorption versus being healthy, it's a huge difference <clears throat> for somebody who's dealt with gut issues. So I always really pay attention to this, but you know, when you're bulking and your calories start to creep up, if you start to eat foods that you don't digest well, you're just not gonna be able to eat it uh, enough. You're not gonna be able to hit your, your targets. And then you're gonna be force feeding yourself or stuffing yourself. And then that lasts till the next day. And it just becomes totally miserable. Like I the only like way to do this is to really there, eat there has to good. be something too, Sal, to be said about if you are eating like that and you eat a food that doesn't agree with you, that you're literally on the toilet, you know, five minutes later and shitting it all yeah. out, like as graphic as that is for someone to hear. I know people have experienced that, especially someone who's trying to bulk. And I know those it's not like you shit all the calories out and you don't get any of the energy or calories from it, but you got to think you're that losing nutrients. You are definitely losing some nutrients hey, look, and, speaking, get, and not getting all the benefits from speaking it. from personal yeah. experience. The difference between my, when my gut health is good versus not is like eight pounds of lean body mass. That's a lot. That's a lot. Eight pounds of lean body mass is the difference for me between good and bad gut health. But you know, beyond that, even if your gut health is relatively good, you know, if you start to reverse diet, which is a bulk, right? Or you're just trying to bulk at some point, if you don't eat foods that you can digest well, you're going to be met with this, like forcing yourself, stuffing yourself. Oh, I don't want to eat anymore. I feel so lethargic. Mm -hmm. I feel so stuffed. Foods that tend to be easily digestible are typically non-gluten containing foods. I say typically because some people are okay with those, but usually it's non-gluten containing foods. Uh, meat tends to be easily digested. Um, you know, rice is really well, well cooked vegetables. That's another one. A lot of people don't realize this, but raw vegetables tend to cause digestive issues in people. So people are like, Oh, I eat a lot of salads. Well, if you're bulking and you're eating a lot of salads, you'll find digestive issues as well. So things tend to be, have to usually have to be really well cooked, gluten free for some people. Dairy is okay for other people. Dairy <clears throat> is not okay, but pay attention to that. So when you're constructing your bulking diet, Look at the foods, and, and of course, macros are important, but consider like, is this something I can eat a lot of and not have any digestive issues? Like you may be tempted, and this is why I'm, I'm communicating this, you may be tempted when you're bulking to throw in fast food or hyperpalatable food because you're like, well, I got to eat 4,000 calories. Let me throw in some pizza. Let me throw mm -hmm. in a burger. Right. But then how do you feel afterwards? And then you're screwed for four hours. You feel like you can't eat any more uh, food because you're so bloated and your digestion's off. So- yeah. Definitely consider those. My things. guess is that um, the young male is our biggest offender of this. Sure. Uh, mainly because I think when you're in that bulking mindset, it's like it's just such a calorie driven pursuit. And, and two, and you're younger too, it's like I'll do anything I can to get size and get big and go through that process. So I'll, I'll just cram it all in uh, and, and suffer the consequences of whatever it is. And like that was kind of like my mentality going into it. I just Same. feel like that that still exists in this message it's, it itself is like, look, you got to find the foods that agree with you the best in order for you to actually maintain and keep the nutrients in order to build the muscle. So, uh, you know, you're actually doing a disservice to yourself and it doesn't have to be that much of a struggle. Well, yes. if this is true, then it would be, it would be logical to assume that this falls on some sort of a spectrum too, hmm. meaning that there's these foods that are that are very obvious that don't agree with you that you don't digest very well that are probably potentially affecting you and and the the amount of nutrients that you're getting from for example like I used 
you eat it and then right away you're on the toilet with that. But that's the extreme. There's got to be somewhere in the middle there too of like, oh, you're still eating things that aren't really agreeing with you. Yep. And it's upsetting your stomach. Good it's point. inflaming you a little bit, but you're not throwing up. You're not shitting yourself. Yeah. And so you just, you stay in that, that those, those patterns of, of, of allowing those foods in the diet versus, you know what, let me try and eat something that agrees with my body more and see if I see a better performance, better results, better recovery, better everything from it. That's where I think actually a, a lot more people land in because it's hard for them to make that connection. I mean, yep. I mean, for as a trainer and coach, so and I, right. I, I, and I know these things. I think there's still things that I go like, oh damn, that that doesn't affect me. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. So here's my test. So I'll ask myself because you're 100 percent right. There is a spectrum. There's like super easy digested foods, and then foods that are obvious, like you eat them and right away you notice. And then there's stuff in the middle. So I ask myself, is this something that I can eat a lot of? over and over again and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Is this something that I feel lethargic afterwards or do I do I feel it repeating on me afterwards? Do I notice any changes in how I feel? So I have foods that I can put in a category of, I can eat the hell out of those <clears throat> and I'm really, really fine. For example, for me, it's well-cooked vegetables, it's uh, white rice, uh, red meat, eggs, chicken, <clears throat> and fish, all in the super easy to digest, digest category. And then there's foods like, you know, like uh, I have to be careful with, like I can eat potatoes, but if I crush too many potatoes, then I start to feel a little blow. So that's kind of off that a little bit. And then there's things all the way over here, things like gluten and dairy, where one meal contain those and I'm not going to feel good. I also think there's a, a, a combination of those. For example, and this is top of mind for me because just literally two nights ago, I think it was, um, Katrina and I ordered five guys. One, I hadn't had five guys in at least a month or two. And the last, I don't know how many times I'd ordered five guys, I had ordered uh, just the, the um, what do they call it? Lettuce wraps, right? And then I turned into like a salad, right? Oh, yeah. And Katrina said, do you want uh, your usual lettuce wraps or do you want the burgers? I was like, you know what? I want the burgers. I haven't had, I haven't had a burger in a while. I was like, I, I was craving it. I'm like, give me, give me two of the double cheeseburgers from there, right? Oh, it fucked me up. And so- and and I, I'm I'm always reminded this when I when I tease it out for a while and then I reintroduce it and then it reminds me of like damn this and really what it is is a combo of what I found of the bread the cheese and the meat from there it's like uh one of those in an I isolated in my diet isn't enough to really it's all three yeah it's yeah, good it's, point. It, all three of those are enough of a fender combined together in an overconsumption of calorie meal and it is like the absolute bomb. Yeah. And, and also consider this, right? When you're in this kind of low state of <clears throat> inflammation, it's going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your recovery. It's going to affect your cravings. You're not going to burn fat as effectively. You're not going to build muscle as effectively. And then consider this when you're on a, a bulk and, and a cut, but when you're on a bulk, you really want to hit your protein targets. It's hitting a bulk with low protein is going to encourage fat gain. It yeah. just is. So as a, you know, I'm, I'm a, let's say I'm, I'm 200 pounds. I want to aim for 200 grams of protein in my bulk, but let's say I only get hundred grams of protein, but I still hit my calorie targets. I'm more likely to gain body fat. So especially when you're trying to hit your protein targets, this is something that's real important in, in, in terms of avoiding things that are like heavily processed and junk food. Junk food typically will give you lots of calories, but not very many grams. Yeah, I mean, this was the trap I fell into as a young, you know, teenage, early twenties kid trying to put weight on was I was really just looking at calories. And until I actually started tracking macros, this was far way before IFYM or even any of the tools that we have now, we had to do everything by hand. And I, you know, understood law throwing dynamics. And so I was so focused on calories that I never really tracked macros. And I remember the first time I tracked and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't building muscle. Yeah. And I, I would go on these bulks and I'd feel like I just put mostly body fat on. I was grossly under eating protein. By a lot. High, high calorie, low protein. High calorie. That's like a pro fat gain diet right yeah. there. Yeah. And it, and it would just put body fat on. I got very little, if any, muscle by just being in this huge. So I did the same thing. I, I think was it's eat, more common than not. Dude, yeah. I did the exact I had the same epiphany. I was eating like 4,500 calories uh, at one point. And I remember uh, one of my trainers like, but how much? How many grams of protein? I'm like, it's got to be high, right? Yeah, I mean, but like 100, like, right? It was like 120 grams. Yeah, yeah. That was I'm me. like, oh, wow. Same thing. This is this is probably why, you know, I got up to 230 pounds and I gained like three pounds of lean body mass. Yeah. <laughs> the rest was body fat. <laughs> body That's fat probably a reason blue. why. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Split. If you want to win this program, 
Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we pick your comment as the winner, we'll notify you in the comment section that you got free access to Map Split. Also, we've put three Maps programs on sale this month, all 50% off. The first one is Maps Performance. The second one is Maps Aesthetic. And the third one is Maps Hit. All of them are 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, I wanna uh, I wanna change gears here and talk about YouTube for a second. So we aired an interview with Zuby, which by the way, he, lots and lots of positive yeah. uh, reviews. People great. really love that episode. Great feedback on that episode. Three hour episode. Zuby actually gave us a great compliment. He says out of the hundreds of podcasts he's done or interviews, this was one of his favorites or one of his best ones, which was really cool because we we think the guy's uh, pretty amazing. But here's what's interesting, right? So we air that podcast uh, on YouTube. Almost immediately, it gets demonetized, meaning we they will not. We're not going to make a single dollar off the the Zuby interview on YouTube because they're not going to put commercials on it. Essentially, it's almost like a shadow ban in the sense that they take away commercials and or it's probably reaching less people or getting less recommended. The reasons that they said that it got uh, demonetized was for using profanity so bad. Bad language. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure that was like the cleanest episode we've ever done. <laughs> it was. I don't even remember swearing once. And also, there was some drug. Drug reference. Which I like, took me a while to figure that out. I think we mentioned mushrooms, psychedelics at one yes. point. Oh, right. So what's interesting- So, me, so- Briefly. Briefly, yeah. Here's, this, is, this is why big tech is so unbelievably annoying and frustrating. That would be okay if, they were, if there were some consistency- but every single episode we do, we have profanity. <laughs> so I have a and we mentioned weed yeah. or something. So I have a theory around this. For sure. Okay? And here's here's my less conspiratorial brain how it goes. Okay. Since I'm the, the, the least, although I'm I'm slowly so coming. Less to, accurate. I'm slowly I don't know how you <laughs> <laughs> well, what does that you mean go the, what's the difference between, what's between the facts and the six months yeah six yeah. months it's six months down to six months now <laughs> proven to be fact. so what i think happens is i think that youtube instagram these things they they have their algorithm that's designed to comb any episode and pick up for any of these things you know like you just labeled sure. that we got nailed for i don't think it gets set into effect until a bunch of enough, and I don't know what the number is, people complain about an episode. Yeah. So because that episode had some very polarizing topics in it, even though it was received by 90% of the people as a great, even people that didn't agree with that, what I was really impressed with that interview was a lot of people said, I don't agree with everything that he said, but to listen to uh, the way you guys ask questions and yeah. allow him to articulate his answer, I really enjoyed it. But because an, it triggered enough people that actually, and those are the same type of people. You probably that, didn't even listen to the episode, right? They, 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 they go the go out of their way to complain about it. I think that that then triggers another thing on YouTube where they're not taking the time and listening to everyone's episode like that. They go, oh, hit the hit the filter button, see if it has any of these things. Flag they hit, them. yeah, they hit the but well, they wait, hit the button, the button combs it real quick. Oh wow, there was drug talk, there was this. That's enough for us to fly. So and then that's what happens. Here's why. That's my theory. So I would yeah. normally agree with you, but here's why you're wrong. <laughs> we sent in a, re a repeal. We requested a repeal. YouTube went through and looked through it and came back and said, yeah, nope, demonetized. Well, no. Okay, so I still think that... Okay. Every episode, you I know, literally just yeah, said yeah, shit yourself yeah, in this yeah, episode yeah. in the I first know, five I minutes. Know, I know, no, no. <laughs> this episode will get monetized. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. But, this, yeah. but if, unless we talk about something extremely polarizing like that, that's not enough to go send five, 100 people, let's say, to all complain. Like maybe every episode we have, we're big enough now that every episode there's mm. at least freaking ten trolls that like could, you know or some girl that Justin broke her heart when we were in high school and she, <laughs> you know there's so a the, few of those there's a uh, few that linger around like every every you know thumbs down it's thumbs like, down right away everybody's cool you, except you, for that Justin fuck they're that guy. digitally keying his car yeah right? yeah that's, that's exactly right. Justin, doesn't even know. matter what we say like, to who are thumbs you down. so. <laughs> So I think so. I think that happens Seriously. no matter what. I think we're, we've reached a size where, of course, it happens. But then when we have enough of a, a, a polarizing conversation, or there's there's a, a larger group. Let's say it's just again for I have no idea I'm making numbers up. A hundred people go and say this is yeah. you know That's, false, and that a solid theory dude. that triggers that. that. And then when you repeal it, 
They go back and says, well, no, it picked up all these things. Therefore, it's so it's inconsistent. That's, and, and also, but that's why it's inconsistent, though, don't you think? Yeah, I think maybe. That's more, that's more realistic. Maybe, but ever since Twitter came out with the Twitter files, it was very clear, very clear. They had people from the FBI working in Twitter. They had done, you know, politicians had requested certain things that happened. There were specific types of opinions that were censored heavily yeah. and others that were promoted. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think YouTube is part of that. I think Instagram, Facebook is all part of that. Mm -hmm. I think it's bullshit. I think it's complete bullshit. I mean, literally, <clears throat> it, of all of our episodes, it had the least profanity. Yeah. And it probably had, we've had episodes that were entirely about yeah, drugs. It's the first time it was flagged. And I mean, we did ever, we did hit every topic yeah, we I, possibly I, could. I'm yeah. convinced, just like Sal getting kicked off of Instagram, it's because it, it triggers enough people. Because it, it triggers enough people to go and complain. By the way, I can't. And, and it was back getting on. traction. Oh, getting traction. no, so, I can't be let back on. You were that bad. They went through. So we had somebody who was, apparently could find out, you know, get you back on Instagram, whatever. What? They went through and they came back and said it got flagged as a perm. We, they went all the Dude. way to the end. Like, okay, we're going to get it. We're going to get it back. We're going to get it back. Then they got there. It was flagged as a permanent ban. And the reason was because it got, I got kicked off more than eight months ago. So because of that, they're like, sorry, we can never what is bring that? it back. No way, dude. Literally, Donald Trump just made it back yeah. on yeah. Facebook. <laughs> Donald Trump made it. You You're did, trying to tell up. me you're more controversial than that, no, dude? No. Get out of here. No, no, no. I, I really do think it just has something to do with- it's my face. Uh, yeah. Yeah, your face. <laughs> <laughs> just censor my face from now on. Yeah. I, I really, I mean- that beak. Imagine the <laughs> imagine the 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 staff, the amount of people it would take to literally go through. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's most likely, and and, and but but by the way, it doesn't mean that I don't think that the the algorithm is favored or 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 uh, you know one sided or biased. Well, well I, know, I I agree with you, but then what happens is, and here's my prediction: once you're looked at. Once you make a little bit of noise because the algorithm picked them up, you got some complaints or whatever. Yeah. Now, here's my fear. They're going to go back. We have like, I don't know, thousands of episodes on there. They're going to go back and we're going to start getting messages for old shit or now future stuff. Now they're going to be more strict. That's what happened with my Instagram. Hey, I wanted to ask you, since we're talking about some controversial stuff and tech stuff like this, and also so our Maybe, audience- So Doug doesn't stop sweating over there? No, it's a, conversation. It's a, it's a, so Doug doesn't stop. <laughs> no, we're going to stay in this lane. Sorry, Doug. Oh. Uh, no, I'm actually really curious uh, of, of your thoughts or have you been paying attention to the heat that Daily Wire is getting right now? Is this over the whole Steven Crowder thing? Or? Steven Crowder, well, that was what kind of like made me pay attention was Steven Crowder's yeah. uh, contract thing. He recorded a conversation. His argument is that they're still, they're still um, pandering to big tech, you know, even if just because they're conservative doesn't mean that they're not fighting against the war with big tech. Uh, that was kind of his his argument. And then I saw what came out with Nicole Arbor mm. and her thing, her beef with Candace uh, Owens. Candace Owens. I didn't see that. Um, and so it just made me, I paid attention. I wasn't really paying attention to them. Um, I'm not a subscriber, so I don't know a lot of the details of Daily Wire. I know it's obviously a very uh, strong conservative uh, social platform. I know they're growing and exploding right now. And their whole thing is supposed to be pushing back on, you know, big tech censoring, you know, kind of conservative type values and, and views. But this is two situations in, in this recent month where I've heard mm. that they're also kind of pandering to big tech also. Yeah, I actually, and I was listening to Jordan Peterson on um, Rogan and he brought up a, a good point too. Like in terms of like, it's Did he not, go on there again? Is it a new one? Yeah, it's a new one. Oh. And it was, it was, uh, a uh -huh. lot of what we heard when we went to go see him in this talk, mm -hmm. he, he's kind of bringing up and uh, a lot of this around the whole um, global climate, uh, uh, um, you know, religion that's being drummed up. Um, but what he was talking about to be concerned about, too, is is even as much as, you know, he's liking stuff that's going on in Florida with DeSantis and, the and um, you know, some of that movement in terms of like you know, trying not to censor and all this. They're, meanwhile, like getting rid of critical race theory in schools and all this, they're starting to kind of get in a conundrum where they have to censor certain yeah. information, which then now that's going to lead them down that rabbit hole of like, what, what can said. you actually censor? Uh, because it's there's a lot of subjectivity to it. So, that, so this is what I'm hearing from... Steven Crowder's side and their argument and and the same thing from Nicole Arbor. Both of them were saying that you were you're censoring or you're canceling somebody else. So what makes you any better than the right. crazy left? There's, now you're just the radical right. There's right. two Which is there's, a 
valid concern. Two things to look at. One is that we tend to think that because people have similar ideals that they're all going to get along like each other and want to do business with each other. So just because Nicole Arbor, Stephen Crowder, Daily Wire, you could put in that conservative camp, I guess, doesn't mean that they're all that they're all going to agree with each other, want to work together. Yeah, no kind of different thing. than the the left. It doesn't mean just because you have left leaning politics doesn't mean you're yeah. like the radical. It's not like left a monolith like of wanting the, to cancel everybody. Right, right. right. Yeah, so, yeah. so that so there's that. The um the the other part is in regards to. When you have, I am against uh, censorship and I'm against tyrannical government overreach. Anytime it happens, this is the problem. Yeah. The problem is that everybody's against it when the other guy does it and everybody's for it when their guy does it. Right. When Trump is in office passing executive orders, conservatives are like, yay. When Biden does it, conservatives are like, no. Yeah. You have to understand that it always sets a precedent. And DeSantis made it, he did something that I was totally against. Now, a lot of stuff he does I like or whatever. I did not like the way he was with D Disney. Disney was outspoken yeah, um, and against him and against his whatever his bill was. And so then he went and threatened Disney to change their tax status because he's the governor. He could do that. Mm -hmm. That's tyrannical. I don't care if you agree with, you know, if you're against Disney or not for what they did, you should always be against government doing that kind of stuff or at least be consistent. So- and that's the thing we got to do because what ends up happening is when your guy's in office or your people are in power and you support them doing shit like that, that means the next guy's going to do the same thing when they're not on your team. And meanwhile, the the, the boots march towards more power, more government, more I tyranny, mean, the, the truth freedom. to me with this conversation, what it highlights more than anything else is that, uh, you know, you're a fool if you really think there's a left or a right side. Yeah. yeah. It's, they're on the same it team. It all moves in one they're on direction. The same, they're on the same team. Yeah. Two-side the military industrial complex. I mean, the biggest war hawking right now is from the Democratic side of the fence. Like, yeah. Like, that was always a big concern. because they're in power. Yeah. yeah they're the same. Like, on, I don't hear any of the, the, the concerns the from that group. No, you know, when they, they, they both accept me. that we're going to disagree on these things and we're going to fight Look, over them. It's so when it comes to war, when the when the right is in power, the left is pro peace. We can't be killing anybody, right. poor people. Yeah. And when the left is in power, no censorship, right? The, and yes. All of a sudden, it's all okay. But censorship. it's pack it's packaged differently. When the left is in power and there's war, the right is against uh, intervening, and we can't be stepping in other people's business. Let's focus on ourselves. It's it's positioned differently, but it's the same thing. They're the whoever's not in power is the pro peace party, and it's always just enough people. That they can't, I don't have enough power to stop it, but they have, they can say enough to appease the people who don't want to go to war mm -hmm. that, okay. Or spending, everybody's like, oh, you know, whoever's in power spends all the money. Whoever's not in power opposes the money spend. And then they flip and it's the same thing. It's always the same thing. It's just two, two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Did either, any of you guys get a chance? I bet did no one listen to the Peter Lemon thing yet. No, I want you guys to listen. To that. <laughs> no, sorry, I, I just I think it's. Really, I was supposed to. I, I told yeah, you yeah, yeah. No, did anybody, he's super positive, right, about the economy and. Yeah, yeah. No, he. Well, I, I, that's a strong statement to say he's super positive. I would say that he or more that, optimistic than. Yeah, other he's very optimistic that we're in much better shape than a lot of people are. Than a lot of headlines would make you, you know feel as far didn't, as didn't wasn't his predictions like in the 90 percent like he only had like a few of them that he said that he was wrong bro he's 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 spot on a lot dude he's become one of my favorite economists to listen to as far as he's pretty level-headed now my buddy chris nagibi his argument to him is like he's like you know he's a really smart guy and he goes i agree with most of what he says he does have a slight he says real estate slant and so it's in his best interest to be bullish hmm. on the housing market and stuff like that because that's a lot of where he's made his money. And so when you have that, you tend to be more optimistic in that. But he goes, all in all, though, I mean, the, st the statistics and the things that he puts out in his, his Litteman report and his and what he talks about is true. It just it's not the and the biggest thing that we've been talking about is like the credit card debt and all that yeah. stuff like that that's going on right now, which is pretty bad. But then when you look at the average uh um, net wealth for a, a average home, it's up significantly, it's way higher. And mm. even the debt, when they give you the numbers on how crazy the debt is, they're comparing to last year, the year before. When you look at it 10 years ago or what like that, it's actually not that oh, crazy. Oh, so historically, it's not crazy. Yeah. Oh. So there's a lot of these, like, so now I'm, it's so, it's so oh, hard, right? When you see headlines like that, it's like, I can't just take, even if it's from a good source, Right, these are good, credible sources, and it's true that oh, we've had this huge increase in the debt. But then, if you just go back to like 
08 and see how upside down it was like it's way tough more. Cause alarmist kind of uh, headlines like capture. Everybody's always. Attention. They do always. Yeah. And so even, even myself, I, the, yeah, these, like which headline is going to get more clicks? Like everything's going to be okay. Or like, Oh my God, we're going to tank and the world's going to end. Same and, thing with the climate. I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, if you alarm everybody, like we're going to have an apocalypse, then you know, you're going to get some kind of like policies that come out. Of that. No, you're right. 100%. Yeah. Which is why I like Linneman because I think he does a really good job of being pretty, you know, optimistic. And he's not saying that we're not, we're not due for a correction and coming the other way. But when you look at it from a, you know, five, 10, 20 year lens, it's not as crazy. We always like to go like, Oh, it's up 25% of what compared to last year or, you know, mm -hmm. the year before it's like what over the course of 10 years, are we that bad compared to, and so, Oh good. Yeah. So it's, it's a good list. You guys better. need to listen okay. so we can, we can have a little, little bit more. I got, I got, I got something for you, Adam. Yeah. So, uh, they just did a poll. How long has ChatGBT been out? Was it like a couple months? Right? It's, it, it's like only been a couple months, right? As far as I know, yeah, yeah three right? months or so. So this is a new this is a new study that came out. Ready for this? This is this is crazy. It's only been out for a few months. Eighty nine percent of college students admit to using ChatGBT for their homework. Eighty <laughs> nine? Yeah, dude, that's so high. I know. Bro. Oh my god! Because I, I even saw an article in our local newspaper, like uh, uh, not the Sentinel, but it was one of these like. And they were already like, oh my God, like this chat GBT is going to like completely change our entire education system. I'm like, yeah, where have you guys been? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, immediately what I thought. 9%. That I know kids, by the way, I know kids, uh, high school kids, seniors and juniors who've already turned in papers and got them graded. Nobody knows. I mean, this Did, is getting wild. What does that say, Doug? The genie's out of the bottle. Launched in November, 2020. Two. Dude. That is wild. So from twenty from November till now, you already have eighty nine percent. That's of just this last November. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Eighty nine percent. I mean, I just to me that's a testament of how effective <laughs> it is, so right? Cool. Yeah. Like you would not have that Bro. many kids adopt a new technology like that unless it was extremely effective. It worked. You know, everybody just it's like a text message. Like, hey guys, <laughs> like this is what I did. Well, you know, what? remember we've talked about this is you know dating ourselves, but I remember like when we talked about God, could you imagine being back in school with TED Talks and YouTube? Like, yeah. I feel like I would have crushed school just from that. Like yeah. be able to go to a resource that allows me to listen to a lecture by somebody who is a great, like great at lecturing and giving me the information I need and go right very specific to what I need to learn. Dude, the only thing close to it that I remember is like when, when we got those calculators that you could actually like do all the um oh, the Texas different like form yeah, like Texas the formulas for yeah. for all the different like graphs and because you had to like remember and memorize all those things previous to that that it's like do we ban these do we allow them in the there's class actually, and they finally allowed them there's in actually there. a really cool story around the texas instrument uh evolution you have to look that up for me doug look up like texas instrument ca calculator, calculator no calculator story uh, i'll we'll circle back to that because you I could read literally write in everything too and it would store it and so when you go to take the test you literally could just scroll on yep. your like it's a computer yep. like you yeah. could like and so they didn't they kind of were just like, oh, well, you know, this is part of the curriculum now. What are they going to do with this? Because I, I don't know how they're going to get around it. They I can no make idea. you write stuff in class. So there's, okay, so like there's software that's already out that is to combat it, right? So they already actually have software. I'm sure it's way behind though. That's the problem. It's like, it's like, you, it's like drug testing the Olympics. Exactly. They only test what they know. I mean, you're right. I mean, I, I, I who I, was it that came up with the, God, we interviewed, was it, um, I, I forgot who we were talking to, but they said, maybe what they'll do, like they do with athletes. So if you win the Tour de France, they'll store your urine and blood for 10 years and test it. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. It's yes. Because the technology catches up. <laughs> How fucked up would that be? You're like 10 years into your, your, your doctor. You're yeah. being a doctor. Oh, we gotta, then they just take your, we're pulling your PhD, PhD out because we just found that we like just found out that 80% of your tests are done by chat GBT. <laughs> yeah. oh, I mean, you're actually else, lazy. Sorry. How uh, else are they going to do it? You know what? That would be an effective threat though. Because you might think they're never going to catch and be like, oh, I don't well, so that what do you, okay, so what do you guys think about this? Because this is one of the arguments, like, if that's something that you can use in real life, why would you limit a student to teach themselves through a tool like that? It's kind of like, it's the same argument for a calculator, right? It's like, why would you tell them they can't use a calculator for these things and force yeah, them to- It's just like it jumped, right. I feel like it jumped so many steps. I think that's where the alarm sets in. It's like, 
whoa, like this is way more powerful than those previous tools. Yeah, it is. But the truth is, it's going to be here. But yeah, you're right. And but they're going to be able to use it in real professions like that. So it's almost kind of silly to try and like- I, I mean, mean, you're right. That's the future. Right. So obviously right now, there, there's going to be an overcorrection by teachers. They're going to be like, okay, everybody writes by hand. Essays yeah. only done in this classroom, thinking that that's the right way to handle. But it's like, okay- well, that same student, when they grow up and they're 25 years old and they're uh, an executive for some company, they are going to have that resource. And Look, gonna- and this is where part of me gets like, so if I'm I'm the most negative out of all of us probably about all this stuff, but like the positive side of it and the optimism to me is like, this is going to have to restructure the way we educate kids. And I think that this whole memorization thing has been bullshit since day one. Uh, in terms of like how we're, we've been trying to educate kids, you have to memorize all these facts. You have to memorize, but you're not applying it very well in the real world. Well, so literally, we literally the, the, the intelligence Agreed. gap between me and you and Sal is literally Sal's a better Googler. That is it. Yeah. That, well, literally, you and I would be <laughs> like, that was such an underhanded. <laughs> I was a slight. I was like, what's he gonna say? I give you. I'm a full credit. For that. <laughs> he's a fucking brilliant Googler. He is. We'll, we'll be sitting here. I want a T-shirt that says uh, uh, he's the he's most brilliant. Googler. The most brilliant Googler you ever met. Like yeah. he's really good. Like we could be having a debate about something, but he, and but within three minutes, is, he'll is, have he'll have a PubMed study quite, that defends his point, yeah. and uh, and I'll be still trying to Google. You know, I'm trying to figure it out. And he's the already Googler. he's already got three studies they to prove Googler me wrong. There. You know what? There's a skill to that. Listen, listen, For sure. 100%. Um, look, if you look at like, if you look at situations where it's very clear, you need to know who's, who's going to win and who's going to lose. Look at war, okay? We don't teach soldiers today. We don't spend a lot of time give, teaching them sword fighting skills for a reason. Why would you teach all your military how to fight really well with a sword when the battlefield, the victory well, or, or loss is determined by... The advanced weapons. No, you that's know a, how to that's use a great weapons. argument. Why yeah. why don't we just have all of our you know <laughs> the, all of our forces use Call of Duty as their training for yeah. for warfare? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just do play Call of Duty all day yeah. long. Let's not well, actually get a gun and actually go well, out. Well, no, there my and point is like if, if if you're the future of uh, work, the future of productivity is utilizing these tools. Then what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to teach students how to maximize these tools, yeah. not how to do the work that these tools do. Learning how to do the work that these tools can actually do for you is wasted time, in my opinion. Yeah. It's wasted time. Now, the fear is, what are we going to do if we don't have these tools? Well, I mean, what would happen now if we didn't have electricity and, you know, modern well, food production? Elon's uh, whole thing is to become, you know, to be the cyborg. So yeah. you basically just incorporate yourself with the technology. I know. Which is, <laughs> I mean, again, like this is all like stuff that's like, we watched as science fiction growing up. And it's like, these are real things that we're wrestling with now going forward that I'm pretty like, wow, this is crazy. Speaking of advanced technology, um, I've been doing more reading on, we're we're supposed to talk about Juve, which is red light therapy, right? That you could have in your house. The research on red light therapy's effectiveness on wrinkles is profound. There isn't a single thing that will make your skin look younger aside from improving your health, right? Right than red light therapy. Like yeah. literally, in, if you look at the studies and you compare red light therapy to any other method of reducing the appearance of wrinkles wow, and making com- your skin look younger. Is that compared to like topicals and everything? Oh, like, crushes yeah. it. Oh. Cr- like the only other option it. you got is like Botox, it, right? That just paralyzes your skin. It destroys it because it stimulates collagen production. Redu- literally, it does. The reason why your skin changes as you age is it produce, you produce less collagen, the matrix underneath your skin starts to break down. Uh, red light therapy does the opposite, actually promotes the growth of collagen, promotes these collagen matrix to build. So it literally reverses time, if you will. In, in Why do you think that Juve hasn't came out with one of the face mask ones yet? So when you talk to them, there's a big difference between the red light therapy you see in studies and then the common red lights mm-hmm. that you could buy online. I think just the engineering of like how to get the yes. maximal amount out of those like red light bulbs. There's a certain spectrum. There's a yeah, a, I know. A, a, so your so your theory is that probably those ones that are the They're face mask ones are, aren't as effective not as even the close. Oh no, yeah. Because to me that would be really cool. Like I, I mean, I would totally. I mean, they have the go. Right? I know they would almost need to be like a helmet. I know, I but like I would totally like. So imagine you like. I wish I was that. It would make me more consistent, right? If it was something I could just kind of slide over, slide over my face, and I could put it on. It'd be on a timer for twenty to thirty yeah. minutes. I could either do something else or even just laying in bed before you go to sleep. 
having that over and then be able to, to, to I mean, they have the go, which is like right behind you. I know. So that's how my sister's good about that. So I don't have a job where I'm sitting still at a desk or else that to me would be perfect. That's mm -hmm. what she does. She literally puts it up right next to like your laptops right here. And then it's yeah. next to it. It's like shining on her while she works. I think that's brilliant. That's, but what, that's what Jessica that's does. The way to do really? It. Yeah, yeah. She'll just have it on mm -hmm. her while she's Yeah. If it. you have a job, to me, if you have a job where you, you have to sit at a computer for an extended period of time consistently every day, to me, that would be the move. Yeah. It's just to put it right next to right next to your computer. But the studies on the skin, on, on changing skin appearance and actually like objectively changing the skin itself. I mean, it blows everything Pretty away. Pretty crazy. And it does it because your body does it. It's not like fake. It's not, you know, paralyzing muscles like Botox and that kind of stuff. It literally makes your skin younger. I didn't know that it cool. rivaled all those things. Oh, crushes them all. Um, wow. uh, Justin, I got something for you. So Yay. I had something for Adam with Chad GPT. I got something for you. So I, I pulled it. up. They did a study on Bigfoot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, oh, a, it's an analysis. Squatch, man. What's it, Squatch up to? It's guys? an analysis. And here's what they found. Okay. For every 900 black bears... In an area, uh -huh. uh, in a given state or province, there's expected to have one Bigfoot sighting. So, uh -huh. do, because of this data, they're saying that they think that what people think is Bigfoot is actually a black bear. Because the phenomenon of it is that, like black bears, they've shown walk on uh, their hind legs. Yeah, and they they'll do that for an extended amount of time sometimes, yes. just playing around, and so yes. people see that like it's a upright ape yeah so they think that that may be it because they did the math and like okay for every 900 black bears there seems to be one bigfoot sighting that makes sense now the other argument is that that maybe black bears live where bigfoot lives so they all live Ooh. in the same place yeah i don't know but what do you think i still like uh bigfoot as an interdimensional time traveler that uh, just <laughs> pops in and out and so he's real elusive that yeah. way <laughs> That was my favorite. You know, <laughs> it, it sounds crazy, ridiculous, but the 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 part of me that like, okay, I could get on board a little bit with this is I remember when I heard the stat on uh, how many new like species or whatever that we find. On oh our, yeah, it's actually really crazy. Like you, we like I think every day, yeah, okay. we we find like a new yes. animal or species. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Chile Mobembe. What? You guys what? ever heard of that? No. Okay. So there's this place in uh, Africa. I don't know the exact country, but maybe the Congo, but um, a real dense uh, jungle. And there was all these crazy noises, like you know, prehistoric dinosaur kind of noises, <laughs> right? And there was like this claim that they they saw. Um, it was it was like not a brontosaurus, but it was like a really like a, a lot smaller. Um, it, it looked like the same type of species as like uh, those plant eating dinosaurs. Mm. So anyways, there's, there was like sightings of it and there's like this crappy video of it. Uh, but so there's, there was that, right. And that was like one thing. And then there was the other one too, where it was like um, recently, and I saw this on like a Joe Rogan clip and they're kind of like talking about um, this, this, um, What's the, the 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 small uh humanoid um species, right? The Hob one that's that oh, was like um, they call them hobbits. Hobbits, yeah, yeah they're yeah. like hobbit people. Yeah. And so it's not it's not because you know in the pygmies, like people are they're like real small, like so it's not pygmy, but um there was this other place, I think it was in this one was in India, I think, but they were riding dirt bikes <laughs> and all of a sudden this little person just runs right out in front of them. Like it was this real tall grass and it was like, they were like chasing them for a while and then like just darts into the grass. And it was, like, it was weird looking at this little person just running. And I'm like, you know, of course it could be doctored and like, there could be uh, yeah. messing with the video. I just thought it was funny that so, they have some clips. Oh, of that. wow. So that's the, what did you just call that? I called it the Mokili Mobembe. That was just for my Bro, memory. these new tropics are crushing for Justin. I know. That, <laughs> I bro, I think he was on point. I actually think he was on point. A living dinosaur? What the fuck? Boom. Did they find it? So, I don't think so. I think it's folklore. I think this folklore. is a, yeah, they've, they've created a photo to make it look like they found it. Oh, uh, 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 Have you guys, have you, Justin, you know this. <laughs> but the, I've heard the audio and it's trippy, dude. You, you guys should listen Justin, to Justin, you've got to know this. So, I, I went down the rabbit hole of lizard people. <laughs> and uh, apparently there's another it happens. so lizard people were alien species that came to earth and they took over the earth and then there's another alien species called the Anukai Anu the Anunnaki Anunnaki yeah. I knew you would know this <laughs> 
And I, I, apparently there was this interla- intergalactic alien federation, right? Yeah. That kind of controls everything. Yep. They came down and they told the lizard people, the An- Anunnaki, mm-hmm. they said, you guys got to leave Earth, leave it to the humans. And the Anunnaki said, okay, we'll leave. And the lizard people said, no, this is our home now. Mm-hmm. That was the, that's the story. Yeah, so that's the battle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Doug, did you look up how many species a day are found? The, that number for me? I so, not. so I get my, my facts straight on that. You know, I saw that I just ran into someone's Instagram page. So you brought up with dinosaurs. Look up on a too. I got It was like one of those spoofs where they, they walk around the street and they interview people. Yeah. And they were, this guy was asking people what they thought about uh, um, Joe Rogan killed a triceratops recently in one of his hunting. <laughs> Try to save the triceratops. Should people be allowed to be going on these big game hunting trips and killing them? I don't believe so. You don't I, believe so? No, there's really no point, like, especially pushing animals to extinction and stuff. And, and the people that were like- <laughs> They were out, so mad? Yes. <laughs> oh, from that the, Jurassic the, Park picture? I don't even know where- he, I mean, he just did this thing where he's walking around and saying, like, hey, did you hear what happened with Joe Rogan, his last hunting, you oh. know, uh, you know, exploration or whatever? The last thing he, he, they killed, he killed a triceratops and they're <laughs> an endangered species. And, <laughs> And you should have seen some of these people that so were like, ridiculous. yeah, that were going on these rants about how like how wrong it is and everything like that. It's no, like, that's oh. funny because that reminds me of um, when this. So y- you know when everybody was getting upset about the trophy hunting and like yeah. uh, Cecil the lion and all that kind of stuff. So there was like there was this sort of onion article or something that went out and it had um, one of the actors from. Um, uh, Jurassic Park who was oh, sitting I in front this. of this dead dinosaur and then the, it, it surfaced on social media and everybody was getting up I can't believe you killed this <laughs> you know <laughs> this majestic dinosaur. animal so maybe that's maybe that's what it, maybe <laughs> it that's what dinosaur. it was attached to it was pretty it was funny fake. I was like bro look, look at this isn't that crazy so uh, the year 2016 science described around 18,000 new plant and animal species that is the equivalent of 49 species per day or 400 what is that 49.3 wow species per day that's what okay so that's on earth i remember when i first heard that stat i was just just, a new guinea i was blown away because of course i mean want to tease you for something like that but it's like is it really that weird to think that we've found some new species when we were on average we're finding 49 every single day no there's a stripe that's why there's this striped i think it's called a striped tiger that we thought was extinct forever and they found it and they saw that it was actually, it wasn't a striped tiger. It was like So a, there's this whole movement too. And you guys have heard of the whole thing of like bringing the woolly mammoths back and like they're, yeah. they're literally genetically trying to, you know, clone them. And then it was also the Tasmanian tiger. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Tasmanian. Tasmanian. So they're, they're, they're also trying to. Like how smart Justin is. Uh, I, uh, I can't wait to get my peptides. Genetically <laughs> <laughs> clone them and bring them back. It's crazy. It, Dude, like, yeah, this is where my brain gets all, you know, fires like on all cylinders. Cause there's <laughs> also like within um, Antarctica, like, there's just so much there that uh, is m- like mystery, right? Like, there's just like places where um, there's a cave where it's, you go underneath it. And because of the geothermic heating and everything, it's like its, it's like own tropical. tropical climate underneath the surface of this crazy like yep. like arctic tundra and you're like people could live down there isn't that where the nazi base is i mean this is what this is where it gets <laughs> yeah. this is where it gets like you guys won't listen to me if i take me seriously if i bring that kind of yeah, stuff he in only brings <laughs> yeah, yeah, he edits, I you edit, your, edit your conspiracy theories so it sounds a little more realistic sprinkle in the realistic I'm stuff leave, I'm and then like that part out right you guys there. can like hey, research hey, look it up yourself that's what he says it's pretty wild uh doug look up the anunnaki are they were they giants that were that were here giant people yeah so so, and that's the other thing. It's like um, a- you, you look at like biblical. Uh, so you look at uh, accounts of um, uh, what do they call those? Like the um, they, the giants yeah, that, they that were like the observers. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some weird correlation between a lot of like religions and, and myths that um, you know kind of explain like why giants Here, might have existed. Here's an interesting fact. Did you guys know that Antarctica mm-hmm. is the continent with the highest IQ? Why? Because like, <laughs> because they're all scientists. That's it. Because uh, there's so few people, but course, they're all like super course, smart scientists. That's cheap. Yeah. I just learned that. Thing. I have a staff for you that's interesting. That's not on your guys' conspiracy science nerd, but it's uh, in the financial world. I thought was interesting. Um, one third of all millionaires never even made six figures. What? So they went from nothing to millions. So one third of all millionaires never made an annual income of six figures. No, it just means that they learned. Remember, I've brought up the stat before. What the number one thing common of all millionaires, I've shared this before, 
is that they know how to live well below their means. Yeah. And so one third of today's millionaires never made six figures. So that's just from their wealth growing because yep. of investments. For, from from being, like for being, for living well below their means and investing. So you're talking about in income then, like you're bringing home. Yeah. yeah so they, they, they don't they, make an income. Right. They six. became a, one third of all millionaires net worth, right? So they're, they could be their house, could be whatever never made six figures. But I, that's such an alarming huh. number when you think about like one out of every three actually never even made six figures, six figures, but yet they're millionaires. Like over 80% over of them too were self-made. So meaning mm -hmm. they, they didn't inherit anything. They didn't get money from anyone. Do you know how many millionaires in wealth live in the Bay Area? People who, immigrants who came, like my parents. My parents on paper are millionaires because the house that they bought, you know, long time ago right. for 200 grand now is worth one point, whatever. So on paper, they're technically millionaires. Now, okay. So I want to, I want to say something though, to commend them because the average person will just dismiss that as like, well, of course they bought a house 30 years ago. That, that's it. Yeah, it was you know, the discipline, you know, the discipline, yeah. you know, how many people I know that actually bought a house 30 years ago and they don't have millions of dollars yep, because yep. They look at it like a giant savings account and they've just pulled out on 100%. their property yeah. five or six Keep times. Refying and all the time. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it's fair to dismiss somebody who, you know, bought a house 30 years ago, held on to it, and then be like, oh, well, they're only merely, oh, yeah, but you know the discipline it takes of course. to allow a home to appreciate like that over decades and never, you know, dip into it like most people would. So, yeah. I mean, I just think that's really interesting because as a kid who wanted to be a millionaire so bad when I was younger, you know, I would have been, I was always looking for the jobs. What job pays me the most money and how, how quick can I get to making that much money when in reality, uh, the, the strategy should be more like, oh, how can I live on yeah. the, the least amount? How can amount I conserve the, my means? Yeah, it's right no now. different than this. It's like trying to get lean by speeding up your metabolism right. versus trying to get lean by burning calories that's yourself. Right trying to become wealthy by taking your money and figuring out how your money can make money for you is a smart strategy. Trying to make the money yourself by working more, that is a tough, tough. strategy. And, yeah. and very, there's a lot of people who have a millions of dollars in net worth, very few, much fewer people who actually make millions of dollars in income. It's right. a much smaller number because right. it's much more you know, right. much more challenging. So I have a, a, a dad story for you guys. I know the, the last, I think I told you uh, off air before we started today that it almost made me cry, but it wasn't like a, a good cry. It was like, it hurt my feelings cry. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had my, I had my first oh, experience man. with that. Right. So Katrina and I, this is a couple nights ago, we're laying in bed and uh, Max comes in and we're like, actually we're up watching TV and uh, he hasn't been feeling really well. So we, we kind of let him just uh, climb in between us. And so he like nestles in between us. We're finishing up a show right there. And he's like, you know, trying to sleep and he's, 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 get, he's uncomfortable. He's uncomfortable because the lights are on in there and he can't get comfortable between the two of us. And he kind of sits up, he's like half awake. And Katrina goes, do you want, do you want daddy to take you back to your bed? He goes, yeah, my bed. And I said, okay, come on. So I take him and I walk him back to his bed or I carry him actually. And I'm, I'm carrying him back in. And normally what we do when we put him down like that, we normally will lay and lay next to him for a little bit until he kind of falls asleep and then creep out or whatever. So, and Katrina does this most nights. And so I'm like, Oh, I haven't, I, since the, we've been at this new place, I haven't even laid, laid with him one night. So I'm like, I'm, I wanted to lay with him. So I lay him down and I lay with him and he, and he, when I first lay him down, he's his head's facing the other way. And I'm laying there not even for like 30 seconds or so. And then he flips his head over and he, and he sees that I'm laying there with you. And then he sits back up and he goes, I need water. And so I hand him his, his thing and he, he takes a drink of the water and he goes, go. And I go, huh? <laughs> and I go, what did you say? And he goes, I don't want you in my bed. <laughs> and I said, you, you want daddy to lay next to you? Like totally deaf ear. Yeah. Like, you want daddy to lay next to you? No, go. And I'm like, okay. I said, good night. I kiss him. And I'm like, this can't be, he's going to, he's going to get up. Right. I walk out the room, go in the room. Katrina's like, oh, wow, that was fast. I said, yeah, he told me to leave. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just looked at him, sucker went right to sleep. Dude. <laughs> Laid yeah. right over. Once he, he did it again the second night, dude. Oh, Two nights in a row he's dad, done. Bro. Yeah. He's like, yeah. It's because your dad. It's totally because of that. Because if Katrina goes in there, he wants her of all course. cuddle up. But in, even I've always been able to do that. This is now, we're in this new phase now where you don't want dad in bed it with me. Shifts. Dad's too big and hot. Dude, so <laughs> <lazy. laughs> so, I remember I was, going through that. Oh, it killed me. Oh, dude. dude yeah. I was just like, Oh, is ever my last oh you just wait, oh. you just well now you're getting in, in, into the teen years you just wait where you're like you know i'll text them you know they'll be in the room hey hey you guys want to watch a movie together nah 
Yeah. Like, ooh. Yeah. Then yeah. They, then they I watch made popcorn. <laughs> you guys want to hang out this weekend? Ah, yeah. I've got all these plans with their friends. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just like, dude, well, that I actually like made a point of because ever it's like just young enough, I have that like small window left. We went on a hike for like three miles, like in the woods. And we just went as far as we possibly could pack the lunch and everything. Cause I'm like, dude, I don't have this kind of time with him. Like it's very short window. So we did that. Oh, it was a great time this weekend, but it was like, dude, they're already every weekend. Everything is all accounted for now with their friends. Like they're calling friends they're texting friends. They're on, you know, their devices, like talking to them. And it's like, we just, we're way less cool. Yeah. Aurelius, I was, I was giving him food and then I got up to do something. Jessica's there and he goes, he goes, Papa, feed me. So I'm like, oh, you like him when Papa feeds you? He goes, yeah. I said, who's your favorite, mom or dad? You know, Jessica there, who's your favorite, mom or dad? And he looks at me, he goes, mom. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. I go, mom's your favorite? He goes, yes. And I said, oh, yeah, but, but who's the most fun? Who's the funnest, uh, mom or dad? And he goes, mom. I'm like, oh, who's the best one? So now I'm trying to trick him, right? So I'm like, who smells the most? And he goes, dad. I'm like, oh, you know what you're saying, damn it. <laughs> you know? And he looks at his mom, too, like, uh-huh, I'm on your team, mom. I'm like, all right, whatever. The only plus side to it for us. not buying you things anymore. For us is that <laughs> there's been times, and I've thought, I always feel I've I feel bad, but I also go ha ha. See this is that he wants her so much that when there's moments where I'm like poor Katrina, she just like wants a break, you know, or she's yeah. just like I don't. And but she'll ask him, "Do you want daddy? Daddy will go take you. Daddy will go lay down with you." And he's like, "No, yeah. no, I want mommy. I want mommy." I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. I got. I got the youngest. I got Dahlia now, right? She's two months old. I'm like I'm crossing my finger. Be a daddy's girl. I just want one of those. You know what I mean? I just want a little girl that just. Oh, I think do everything she, with daddy. I think she will. Mm -hmm. Now, is there? Uh, yeah, I imagine it's still though at the at the obviously her young age that it still will be the attachment more to the moment. When does the 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 daddy's girl phase normally start? It depends. Is I have they, friends whose dad who their daughters were like that. So my older daughter was never like that. She was never daddy's girl. You don't think she is now? No. no. Oh, really? No. Oh, I feel no. like your daughter's daddy. She loves girl. me. I, you know, love all that stuff. But she's not like that. Like I see, I have friends with daughters where they're like daddy's girl. You know. But my daughter was. She's she's never been like that. Now, if she really needs something or whatever, and you know something happens, she'll she'll talk to me. But I mean, like that daddy's girl where you know they follow dad around when it whatever. No, I never my heard uncle that. has that. So I'm like his, hoping his, like my youngest, his two daughters mm -hmm. like that. Like I think as a, as a, if I had a, a girl, that's I would aspire to have that relationship where they're 20 years old now, and if their dad's sitting on the couch and they come in the living room, like both girls, like lay on him. Really? Yeah. Just we can be middle of the oh, day conversation, great. and doesn't matter how the seating arrangement is in there, they'll come over wherever he's at, and you know, like a leg over him or head on the shoulder. Oh, just, that's cute. Yeah, and just and it's so, and yeah. you see it every time we're wherever. I'm like, oh, that's so cool that they that he's built that. Dude, I gotta I gotta tell you guys about a, a series on Netflix. I was gonna bring up. I want to bring it up before this intro ended. It's called Physical 100 on Netflix. Have you guys seen I, this? I did see no, it. What, no. I watched premise? a preview and it looks very Squid Game-esque no, to me. Well, I mean, it's because it's Korean. They're both Korean, but it's... It, it's, <laughs> it's not racist. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I, I see why so because well. it's like it's like games, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Past. And well, and then it's, and it's not in English either. No. So it's brilliant though. So Jessica and I started it last night. So what they did is they took the best physiques and athletes from Korea. Everything from... Bodybuilders, powerlifters, runners, uh, runners, Olympic gold medalists in judo and taekwondo, MMA celebrities that they have, um, you know, female athletes, boxers, wrestlers, gymnasts. So just a wide variety mm. of the, the, what they would consider the best physiques. And then the, the the premise of the show is they put them through these challenges. Some of the challenges are because I saw the previews. I only watched one episode. Some of them like definitely reward brute strength. Mm -hmm. Others reward agility or stamina or skill. Like there's, because I was as I'm watching these athletes come in and they're kind of talking about them. They'll show who they are. I see like this one MMA fighter and then this one like judo black belt. And I saw in the previews that there's like where they have to wrestle each other. I'm like, oh, they're gonna kill everybody in the wrestling. Yeah, but it, it depends. So the first event, they all go out. There's a hundred of them. So they all go out and the first event is the ceiling comes down and it's these bars and you have to hang on to the bars with your upper body and then it goes up and the first 50 people to, to fall lose. So they have to figure out how to hang on to the bars. Yeah. And I'm like, right away, the powerlifters and bodybuilders are dead. Yeah. Yo, those yeah, guys are getting heavy beasts. Oh yeah, are screwed. Dude. There were these, there were these, uh, and then they had some like, some guys on, that weren't even athletes. They were just like massive dudes. They yeah. fell right away. 
there was this one girl that she had great technique. She put her arms over the bar and then hooked them around her leg and then brought her legs together. And I told Jessica, I said, she's going to, she's going to beat everybody. And she almost did. What she was like she? A, what was her, uh, uh her she was, uh, I think she might've been a YouTube. There was a couple of YouTube stars. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. But her technique was really good. <laughs> she's watched enough YouTube videos. Yeah, she's like, it, I've seen a video on this. It, it, it's going to be walking on. I lost a YouTube influencer yeah. again. Ah. It's going to be, it looks, it's going to be interesting though, because I can't wait to see, because I, I think I can predict. I thought the gymnast would, would win the hanging thing, and he did. He killed everybody, obviously. Gymnast, right, right, right. you better. But, but then uh, they're going to be one where they're going to lift like a super heavy stuff. Yeah, or, or arm wrestle right, or right, whatever. Right, like, right. you're going to obviously the, the brute strength. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun I mean, yeah. I mean, what would you. Uh, well, did they have like a, a CrossFit Games guy or girl? They did. They yeah. also had um, like special forces people. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see when you look at. So, so Jessica and I were playing this game when they were walking out. Jessica was telling me like, okay, what do you think they do? What do you think they do? And some of them I could guess right away, like bodybuilder, power lifter. Some of them more challenging. I picked out the wrestlers. I can always pick out wrestlers, um, but it's pretty interesting. So to me- Not just their ears, like yeah. the, the female the wrestlers came out. They, yeah, they just had these really wide necks. So if you were to, if you guys were to guess, so on who would probably, what, what type of athlete would do the best in a competition like that, I would lean towards actually like a CrossFit, CrossFit Games kid if they don't do a lot of, athletic endeavors like sports like th like ball sports oh, I see what you're throwing a ball yeah. hitting a ball is so that's where they will yeah. that's where they'll get their ass kicked by a, yeah. a, like another athlete like let's say somebody who's just like well-rounded like you know player could play volleyball basketball football yeah. it doesn't matter they're athletic like that mm -hmm. they'll actually so if they just do it around strength stamina endurance flexibility I feel like the CrossFit Games athlete would be one of the more well-rounded. I, I think they would people. do well. I think gymnasts will probably do really well. The wrestlers are probably mm -hmm. going to do really well. You're probably going to see the winner for the men is probably going to be around 170 pounds, 180 pounds muscular. And for women, probably around 135, 140 I think, pounds. too, the special forces is mainly for the mental fortitude that yeah. they would have over yes. everybody else. Do they have a special force person in there? So so I'm um, so interesting you said that. Yeah. So on the on the hanging one, I, I said the gymnast was going to win. Because if for anybody who doesn't know, if you've ever seen a gymnast hang on a bar, it's like you're looking at a chimpanzee. Like, they'll hang yeah. there and just, like, they'll just they'll eat a sandwich with the other hand. And <laughs> and, and this guy was, there was this uh, gold medal Feeding gymnast. grapes with their toes. He was crushing everybody, but second place was this instructor for special forces ah. and he was a lot bigger but you could tell that he didn't give he didn't care if his arms broke off like he was up right. there yeah. and he had his arms hung over the bars and he just and you could tell his mental fortitude he can deal with pain a lot yes. more than other yes and people. the gymnast was they interviewed him afterwards and he's like i definitely couldn't lose because my friends would all make fun of me if i didn't win this event mm -hmm. he goes but i was looking across at oh so I, I would take the special for i didn't know there's a special forces person that you know they i mean because that's all mental that's all men. Well, and they also tend to attract like the ideal body type for yes. like that overall thing. Like I, I remember when I first, um, oh, what book was that that I read that I oh, Lone Survivor. And I remember uh, reading that and they went into like buds and talked to it. And I didn't realize like what the average weight and size of like the guy who- They're not big dudes. Yeah, no, rarely ever does the big jack dude make it out of those mm -hmm. things. He's They're normally like a- 510-ish and 180 pounds or yep. so guys are not on a farm. Yeah, yeah it's just, just yeah, just really, yeah, like good natural strength, not real, not too tall, not too short, not like muscular and fit, but not too muscular. Like it's interesting to see what comes out of that. Which so someone like that body type, I think, would do. Yeah. If they have some athleticism too, because that's where you'll get crushed by some of the athletes, is if they have if they do a lot of skill stuff. Mm -hmm. throwing hitting in, involved in it so yeah huh, interesting but yeah it was, uh, the, the bodybuilders are gonna get their asses i think just hand it to them <laughs> yeah. uh, unless it comes to, like the pure strength like unless there's know. a like a mirror event yeah yeah, yeah. stupid there was this one chick that was a female bodybuilder and she was like she was like twice as big as me dude you're showing her flexing and stuff before Dang. she goes out i'm like damn bro but she lost right away she had bad technique too she was just hanging out with her hands like what are you doing hang over the bar idiot yeah you get your ass it's not about you movement do. doug I, I had a question for you i know today we have nci uh for a commercial D is when is the event that we are all going to in uh and it's in arizona right i should know these because i've been asked and i don't know the time yeah it's in arizona it's in april uh, the exact date, uh, let me see if I can pull those oh, up. April. Uh, is right now you can enter to win and go there for free? Is that what the entry is? Uh, no, there is actually signing up. So we have an event there. Those who sign up this week as well as book their hotel, we're going to have an event at the hotel and it's going to be us there with, uh, with the participants. Okay. The only way to go to the event and see us 
is if you were in no if you're in that hotel, hotel am i right you. that's correct yeah so there i know that now that i know they have a bunch of other great that speakers hotel. that are that, mm -hmm. that uh, other you have access to but to have access to our private thing you have to also stay in that hotel you, you, you want to know what's really crazy so we had uh nci come by or they brought some of their coaches and trainers we met with them all I, we've now been to how many events have we been to adam coaching oh, con five probably I, like five yeah i'd say somewhere around the there. amount five of coaches six. and trainers so online coaches and trainers the amount that make like deep six figures a year which is if you're a personal trainer and you make over 100 grand a year you're better than 90 percent of the trainers in america okay i can't believe how many of these trainers i meet and they talk about their because they, they do lots of business coaching making one girl 700 grand yeah i know yeah i'm always as a, so as a coach i, I know i'm always impressive. so impressed because you know in i've had success outside of fitness but the most fit success i've had within fitness has been with you guys and what we've currently built and so when i hear these other coaches and trainers who i know look up to us a lot of times and admire what we've done and built and i see what they're doing i'm like <laughs> Yeah. You're doing a lot better than you're, I was by yeah, my. You're yeah. crushing what I did by my. Yeah, by I mean, so you yeah. you, you got to make sure you pat yourself on the back every once in a while. Now they're like, "Oh man, mind pup, all oh, this that." I'm like, "Listen, first of all, I've got three other brilliant men that I, I that I've partnered with, and we have an incredible team of people." You have the Googler, that, yeah. <laughs> <on your team laughs> the best Googler on earth. Googler. <laughs> I mean, for you to have built a business like that, several of them, three hundred, four hundred, seven hundred thousand. I can't a year. believe like, it. that's so impressive. But there's so many I've met. So many. I thought it was like a fluke, but we've gone so many times now, and I meet so many of them who are making tremendous amounts of money doing online coaching and and then it's iterative they continue to do it every single no year, jason so. has done a yeah. really They're doing a good job a really good job they, i mean they have an incredible system input something i would have needed if i yes uh, because i'm not very organized and that was always my bottleneck or achilles heel in yes. scaling my my personal business uh having someone like that that i could lean on to help uh, mm. you know systemize everything for me would have been uh, would have been totally. a big advantage yeah. totally all right one more thing i got I, I, this is just short but i saw this and i want to bring it up because i think it's really cool i read about this french weightlifter who was jailed by the nazis remember the nazis took over you know france they whatever he was a weightlifter he got they threw him in jail he broke out of jail by bending the bars Wow. He bent the. I have a picture of him here. Was <laughs> dead. Yeah, his name was Charles uh, Rigolot. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. He bent the bars, escaped, and then beat the the guard <laughs> who took held him in there and escaped. What? You imagine a, an actual a prisoner bending the wow, bars and escaping? Like a gorilla, dude. How strong do you have to be Holy to do that? Moly. I didn't even think that was possible. I thought they would. That's. I feel like that would be something that you, they test before they put the bars in prisons. <laughs> like. <laughs> Don't you think? Like, yeah. I feel like there should be some sort of like. I feel like if you like could bend the bars, jacked. I feel like if you could bend the bars with your hands, you deserve it. Yeah, I know. That's oh, how I yeah. feel too. I feel oh, like oh, I let guess, him out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you can escape, you can get out. You know, I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> that's what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you guys have for a shout out? Did you guys have somebody on your I list? I do that not you, to shout out. I do not. Oh, look at you guys. So I'll find. So I have. I had uh, this this comedian that I've been sharing, and I actually had so many people ask me, and so I should do it just for that reason because I I didn't tag him. By the way. Well, I have that repost app that Justin turned mm -hmm. me on to. That's when, so people that have asked me like, how come you don't put the person's name on When you do the repost app, it just automatically puts their stuff up there, but it doesn't put their name. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jeff, I want to say uh, Jeff Dyer. He's really funny. I really like his stuff and I've never seen him before until right now. So it is uh, Jeff Dye. And die is D-Y-E. So Jeff D-Y-E. You've shown us this. Yeah, I've showed you. I don't know if you guys are following him yet or mm. not, um, but I had never seen him before. He's, I love following. I love finding comedians and just artists in general uh, when they're like smaller like this and mm -hmm. up and coming, you know, like I think uh, uh, Ty, Ty Fish is another, Tyler Fish is another guy that I follow that I remember finding them when they were really small and like watching their, their fame as they grow that uh uncle lazar who we've he's he's like he just quit like working and he's full-time oh, really? going into comedy because he's done yeah, so he's, well he's getting pretty big mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this, this guy's a good one good follow what's up everybody go check out a company called paleo valley they make they make meat sticks made with 100 grass-fed beef they're not dry they're delicious but they have many other paleo inspired supplements they also have a chocolate flavored bone broth that tastes like chocolate donuts it's literally the best tasting protein powder I've had in my life. I've talked about it on the podcast a few times. Go check this company out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 15 for 15% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show.
<laughs> First question is from Steffers in Progress. Are there benefits to taking a pre-workout supplement over something simple such as black coffee or an espresso shot? Oh, I love this question. I like it because uh, there is some benefit. However, it's not huge. So if you look at pre-workouts, much of the benefit that comes from the pre-workout is from the caffeine. That's what people feel the most. That's what's contributing the most to uh, improvements in performance. Now, pre-workouts will typically contain other compounds like citrulline for increased blood flow. There's some studies that show that might help. Uh, beta alanine, which seems to help with things like stamina. And then smart pre-workouts will have compounds that'll balance out the caffeine. Like theanine? Yeah, like theanine or other herbal compounds that help or mushrooms. Smooth it out so that you can have long-lasting performance. Now, the difference isn't huge. So for somebody who's like really into working out, I think it makes sense. But otherwise, it's it's not that big of a deal. Just regular caffeine uh, seems to be okay for a lot of people. And pre-workout, the category of pre-workout, they didn't exist uh, up until maybe 15 years ago. Before that, it was pretty non-existent. Well, even when we talked about uh, trying to increase pump, like what we had talked about for the most part was that like, you know, drinking more water was going to yes. pretty much suffice when it came to, you know, getting that same kind of a feeling and effect. But they do have those other ones that you'd mentioned in terms of like trying to enhance that a bit further. But I honestly, I think in, in terms of feeling something and like if you're not – you don't have that like immediate excess of of energy, like a caffeine in whatever form. I think coffee is plenty sufficient. Well, what are okay? So, what are the most common compounds that we find that are in pre workouts that have been proven in studies to show some sort of benefit? And then, if you were to extract each one of those, like how would you rate them? For example, beta alanine, citrulline, uh, branched chain amino acids are probably the top three things that are added to pre-workouts that are most common, yeah, would you say? Yeah. And, I mean, and, and explain to me, and I, and I know the research, I know I've talked with our good friend, Mike Matthews, who talks a lot about his pre-workouts and he's got a, a lot of his stuff is dosed really well and, and, and solid stuff. Right. Um, what, when you look at it, like, and I, what, what is the difference? Is it like really Splitting no, hair. No, yeah, it's small. It's small. You know who it matters? It matters to the person who's a fanatic. So like, you know, I work out five days a week, every mm. single week for the mm -hmm. most part. And so for me, it's a big deal. Um, it's like, you know, it's like somebody who's a car aficionado, like small details are going to matter versus somebody who just drives a car to work. So that's where it kind of makes sense. Um, other than that, it really isn't that big of a deal in terms of results. Um, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Really, it's about feel. It's about the enjoyment of the workout. So the way I like to look you look at pre-workouts is, is this going to make something I like a lot or I love a lot even more enjoyable? That's how I tend to pick a pre-workout. Not, am I going to take this pre-workout and build more muscle or burn more body fat? Now, you can make the argument that the more you enjoy the workout, the better it's going to contribute to better results. And that's a fair argument. But to say that there's like this dramatic difference between coffee and a pre-workout, I mean, there really isn't. Now, I don't necessarily do coffee because coffee can sometimes bother my gut. But aside from that, I mean, coffee's it's natural. It's packed with antioxidants. It's good for you. And it's got the caffeine that people are looking for. Now, I will say this. You could take coffee, take some theanine with it, and you'll get a better benefit. Mm -hmm. If you look at pre-workouts, I think the way that you should look at them is rather than What's going to give me more blood flow or better pump? Like that comes from water, being healthy. I think you should look at it and say, what's going to give me the most, the best mental effect? That's where you're going to, that's where you can find pre-workouts that might make a difference. And you want to look at compounds that balance out the stimulatory effects of caffeine. Things that make the caffeine, like, I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had um, too much caffeine where you work out and it makes you feel out of breath? Yeah. Because you have too much caffeine? So that can happen to some people with, with, with caffeine. So yeah. have something that makes the caffeine feel smoother, feel more steady. So you're not shaking on the bar or with the dumbbells where you feel more concentrated, not just gacked out of your the mind. Theanine is amazing for that. Theanine does That's that. It's one of my favorite sure. things that you've, you've got me to do. But like, like cordyceps, ashwagandha, you know, there's uh, lion's mane can help with that kind of stuff. You know, I, a good test for the person asking this question uh, to test for yourself, because, it, you know, like you said to your point, if it makes you work out better, you get in the yeah. group, I mean, then so be it. And you can afford the extra money for the pre-workout. 
the the thing the the biggest I, a mistake I see people that are trying to compare coffee to a pre workout is they're not even doing the same amount of of grams of caffeine yeah or milligrams of caffeine so like you know, i feel you're, my pre-workout way more yeah you're, well, that's, you're, you're, milligrams. that's right your, your average pre-workout today now is 250 to 400 milligrams of caffeine which is like two venti coffees so most people aren't drinking two venti coffees before they go into the workout so you got to give your coffee a fair shot if you're going to compare it to a pre-workout on the dosage so you know and uh, the, the even cheaper and easier way is to get straight caffeine pills Straight caffeine pills are hella That's cheap. That's what I do sometimes. And they, and they come in 25 milligram doses, normally 25 or 50 milligram doses. And, you know, you just pop. time it a little bit better, though. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, maybe 30 minutes. Or I do, I do 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes, I can say, especially if it's early in the morning and on a-, on a That's a, how I do it. Yeah, if you eat it with a, with a meal, you probably give an hour just to be safe. Yeah. But, you know, compare, uh, you know, you do the exact amount of caffeine pills to what your pre-workout is. And I would make the case that you'll feel pretty much the same thing yeah. energy-wise in your workout, here's which what, is what most people And here's what I do. If I, if I work out five days a week, usually I save the pre-workout type stuff. So I'll take peak power, right? That's Organifi's uh, supplement that you could classify as a pre-workout. I'll take that on my most important, hardest workouts. And then the rest of the time I'm doing just caffeine or something mild. So yeah. this way you can either, you could save money, but besides the money saving, it's really about maximizing the effects because if you do like something high powered all the time, it loses its effect anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, when I would recommend to clients, I would tell them, use this on the two workouts of the week that you really want to get after it, the longest, hardest workouts. That way you really feel it and it makes a big difference. Use it all the time. It starts to lose its efficacy. Next question is from Danielle Pisano. What exercise, if any, would the Smith machine triumph over a barbell for an in advanced lifter, given they have access to both? Yeah, I, I picked this one because I know Justin <laughs> would want to pull his hair out. I want to slap this question. I tell you face. what, I'll say this, okay? And I, I have, I have some. So do I. Yeah. I, I would look. I, I for the, for most people, you know. Oh, you know, ninety percent of people. The uh, push up. There you go. There's my answer. <laughs> the I coat hanger. You, usually, that's what <laughs> I would do for right push up or body row. But for for ninety percent of people, uh, you know, you don't really need to use a Smith machine. Now, for the ten percent out there that are advanced, you know, a Smith machine, you can really target and isolate and squeeze muscles because you don't have to worry so much about balance. Like for example, if you do an incline barbell chest press or a barbell bench press on a Smith machine versus with a barbell. With the Smith machine, you can focus just on really squeezing the pecs. So for bodybuilding purposes, when you're advanced, I could see it having value with a lot of different actions. Same thing with barbell row. You do a barbell row versus a row on a Smith machine. With the Smith machine, you can really just focus on squeezing the lats and the muscles of the back versus you know having to balance the bar. But for most people, I don't see- For, you know, che tons of for chest and shoulders, and training hypertrophy and the ability to take it up to failure um, without you know deviating in form and not worrying that someone's going to catch it because you don't need a spotter. And it's on um, the same track. Or doing drop sets. Uh, I could see value in it. Now, I never like to use it for lower body. I think that's where the most controversy is with and and here's my theory on that and i know there's people that love to do split stance squats on there even regular squats on there in my experience training people so many people have so much dysfunction in their feet and lower body that using a machine like that's a terrible idea and and it's a very uh, and you can make that case for upper too which i know that would be justin's argument like justin would be like i would never do upper body on that even because kettlebells and free weights so much better for the shoulder joint and i know he'll come from that angle for sure and i don't disagree with that at all um but i think there is less risk and it's less of a bad choice for like upper body stuff like shoulders and chest yeah. as I think it's a terrible choice for lower body for the reasons that I'm bringing up that most people have weak ass feet and you and have terrible ankle mobility and have terrible hip mobility. And if you put it on a Smith machine track because you want bigger quads or target the glute better or whatever you're using it for lower body, I think you are really missing out on what most people really need to be focusing on when it comes to lower body, which is getting their feet stronger, getting better ankle mobility, getting more stability in the hips. And you are really losing that, losing out on that. And to me, that's the reason why I would never do it for lower body. Yeah. There, there, I'll give you, I'll give you two exercises for lower body where if you have good skill, good technique, you're somewhat advanced 
that I think are okay. Split stance. So like split stance, like a lunge or squat where the feet stay stationary and a front squat. And it's not a traditional front squat. A front squat on a Smith machine, you stand, your feet are in front of you. Almost like, it's almost like you're doing a hack squat, like a sled. So your feet are in front of you. You're kind of staying back with the bar. Now you're, you're considered obviously an advanced lifter, but I don't think I would ever see you do a, a that. Never. Oh. Okay. No. So, and so even, I've even cautioned saying advanced because you could be an advanced lifter and really good at lifts, just, but then you have a ton of dysfunction in your lower body. Yeah, and, and I'm and just saying you can get away with more when you're that advanced and you can isolate and squeeze, right? I mean, but yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Oh, also inverted rows. <laughs> body weight. <laughs> Two things. <laughs> I mean, I did I hit what your point would have been as far yeah, as like- That's I mean, why I didn't contribute much. <laughs> I mean, that's- like You guys covered it. Well, I don't I really, disagree. And I know that I, I think that's a, a very smart, valid point. And I just don't see why I would ever do that with a client. Now, does that mean though, okay, that today you're chalking today up as a lazy day and it's one of, I think where you get into trouble is when it becomes a regular thing. Right. That doesn't mean like you would never catch me on a Smith machine. If I was going to do bench press day and every bench press yeah. was taken, the Smith machine was open. I haven't used Smith machine for bench in two years. If, if I'm if doing all there is is cardio equipment and I'm on vacation and there's a Smith machine or something. Uh, yeah. God yeah. forbid somebody sees if, me doing it. But. <laughs> Look, if I'm bodybuilding in a bodybuilding where I'm just isolate, you'll see me use it. You'll see me use it uh, for, for certain areas that I have trouble feeling. Uh, what, you know, I don't even want to say trouble feeling. I just, I'll, I'll use it as a way to get a pump and to kind of add novelty, but it's just, I wouldn't place the Smith machine in the top 10 of, you know, value. I would just caution like people from making it a regular thing, especially when you have all these areas to be addressing in your lower yeah. body. And, and that also applies for upper body too. If you have all kinds of shoulder dysfunction and you're using it too, it's also not a good idea, yeah. but you got all the stuff that you should be working on with your feet and your ankles and your hips, and then you're getting yourself on a machine. And that, by the way, that would go for a hack squat or any other machine too. I would just encourage body weight or free weight, squatting, lunging, Bulgarian splits. There's so many other step ups, so yeah. many other great movements that you should be doing and not neglecting instead of using the Smith machine. Next question is from Katie C. Soto. What's the best way for women to get sculpted arms? Uh, it's easy. Same uh, way for wait. a man to get sculpted <laughs> arms. Women? Okay, yeah. let's think about this. Yeah, it's it's your, let me hear your sexist answer. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> Well, it's for anybody, right? Build muscles in the arms and get lean. That's really it. Yeah. And I think when people ask this question, they don't realize that that's the answer because they use things like sculpted and oh, what about for women? as if it were any different, right? As if it were any different for men and women. If, if, sculpted means shape. The shape comes from muscle. Build, Build muscle. muscles well, well, in your arms let me and then tell get you, lean so you can see them. Let me That's tell you right. the biggest challenge that, that women, the most common challenge that I saw in my career with women in the, this for this question is in order to get sculpted arms, to Sal's exact point, you need to build muscle. And building muscle requires a calorie surplus yep. and a quote unquote bulk. Right. That is and a big, uh, uh, so, challenge. so you get a, I get a female client, common goal, lose body fat, lean out, get sculpted arms, get a flat tummy. That's what I want. And you say, I really want sculpted arms. I say, okay, well then what we should do is go in a calorie surplus and a bulk and build your arms. And then we will cut down the body fat and then reveal the hard work that you've done. And the challenge is, they also want to trim down at the same time of sculpting these arms. And what we really should do is dedicate a part of your training in a bulk and building yep. and letting go that, oh, your shirts might fit a little tighter or your arms might look a little bigger temporarily while we build this muscle. That freaks well, them out. That freaks them out. And also, hard. too, I mean, it's the multiple rep thing of, uh, and I've got gone through this multiple times, even with Courtney, too, of like, you know, really trust in the fact that if we're strength training now, like we need to actually just be more conscious of loading. So, you know, press ourselves a little bit more intensively on, you know, the amount of load we're lifting uh, for the arms, as opposed to just like getting that burn where we're just like continuously doing reps in order to feel it. So much of proper training is psychological. It's not even funny because if you're trying to get you know, if you're trying to get sculpted arms, the last thing you want to do is feel like your arms are big and bulky. Well, if you're in a bulk and you built a little bit of muscle in your arms, you're not going to build a ton of muscle in your arms because most women can't build massive arms, but you're going to build some. So let's say you add a quarter inch of muscle on your arms 
and you're in a bulk, so you're not necessarily getting leaner because you're trying to build. Now your arms just feel bigger and they're not, they don't look leaner. So yeah. now you're freaking out. Yep. It's just like when a, you know, when a guy is trying to get leaner and at first he just feels smaller. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he freaks out. So it's so psychological, trust the process. Cause what you don't want to do is get in this position where you freak out. So then you go on a cut and you just end up with skinny arms. If you just want skinny arms, well then just, okay, lose weight. But if you want arms with shape, yeah. you have to build. So yep. there's going to be a time in between where they're just going to feel bigger and bulkier. And by the way, they feel bigger bulkier than they look. I know a lot of women come, I don't want my arms, they look so bulky. I look at them like, I don't notice. Yeah. I, if anything, they look uh, more shapely. Yeah, yeah. So it's so psychological. Next question is from Lift for Carbs. When doing unilateral movements, should you switch the limb you start with? For example, the first set starts with the right side, the second set starts with the left side, and so on. Only if both sides are perfectly equal. If both sides are perfectly equal, equal then you can totally do this. Now, that's not true. Oh, I see. What they're, so they're people. okay. Let me clarify this because it took me a minute to unpack what they were saying. So they're basically saying, like, let's say they are doing uh, uh, single arm dumbbell curls. The first set, they start the single dumbbell curls with right arm, and the second one, they go left. Yeah, because it makes okay. a difference which so side. So my you start my with. answer would be actually be almost never, because rarely yeah. ever is there not some sort of a discrepancy, Correct. even with really advanced lifters like all of us in here. I would still say that I still have a little bit more dominant side than one side or the other. And always so, start with the weaker side. So the less dominant side first, always. 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 Always the weaker side. The weaker side dictates what the other side should look like, and you should pretty much always keep that. And even when you are really balanced, you're always going to have a, a side that's a little bit stronger than the other side, and so you start with the opposite side and always. And by the way, so we have a program called Map Symmetry, which is about bringing balance between the right and left side. And we actually had a young lady um, who was on our forum, very fit. Oh, yeah. She did the bio thing. And she did it. a DEXA scan where they scan. DEXA scan will tell you how much lean body mass you have on your right arm versus your left arm, right leg versus your left leg. And she had a before and after. And in the before, there was a discrepancy between right and left, which most people have this. Mm -hmm. Most people have one side stronger than the other. And she was somebody who was fit. So the discrepancy is larger, likely larger with people who are not fit. People who are fit tend to have more balance. Nonetheless, there was like a 0.3 or 0.4 pounds of lean body mass difference between the right and left side. She did map symmetry and followed her advice, which was start with the weaker side. And she balanced them out perfectly, perfectly. And crazy. The, the crazy thing about this is that's muscle that would not have been built had she trained bilaterally. Because bilaterally mean both sides at the same time means mm. that it, your body's used to right. its imbalance. So because she did unilateral training, because she started with the weaker side, because she let the weaker side dictate the reps and the weight for the stronger side, the stronger side maintained while the weaker side right. built, which would have never happened. And so she ultimately built more muscle as a result. Yeah, you'd allow that uh, strong compensation to persist, which then you know would keep developing it at the rate it was developing when, in fact, addressing it allowed her other uh, uh, side to catch up, which then gave that more symmetrical appearance. Yeah, that was such a great testimony because yeah. she actually tested beforehand and then went it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and then so so. I good wish everybody that. that went yeah. through that. Program. But but again, what you want to do is you want to start with your weaker side, let the weaker side dictate the reps and the weight, and then when you go to your stronger side, even if you feel like you could do more, don't copy the weaker side because the goal is balance. The goal is not to maintain the imbalance. You want to maintain the imbalance and find do more reps with your stronger side. But the idea is to maintain balance. So start with the weak side. If everything is perfect, which that's almost never the case, then yeah, then you can switch right to left, but that's almost never the case. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. They're all totally free. All of them designed to help you with your health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram, Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 